Hello everybody, my name is Austin Randolph, and as usual, if you like what I'm kind of uh, blabbering about today, feel free to give me a subscribe and a like, comment, whatever. Um, I just started this channel, and I just kind of figured like I'd do this shit anyways, so I might as well like put it on the internet and maybe something good will come out of it. Um, follow me on TikTok, I post a lot over there, I'm growing a little uh, community over there, same username as here. What are we talking about today? Today we're talking about uh, this thing. And uh, more specifically, um, guitars like this. Because even though the headstock says Fender on it, this guitar is not made by Fender. This is what's called a parts caster. And uh, this is not my first one of them. Uh, right now, I mean, just for shits and giggles, I looked up what the cheapest strap or telly you can buy right now is that still says Fender on the headstock. Still made by Fender, so we're talking like intro Mexican guitar. The cheapest Mexican Fender right now is the Player Series guitars and Maple Fretboard. Uh, right now, it's 800 bucks to get a Fender. That is kind of a lot. So, if you don't have 800 bucks and you don't want to buy a Squire, even though the Classic Vibe series is not very good, if you don't want to do that, you want it to say Fender. Um, maybe a parts caster build is something you should look into. So just going to kind of talk about that, things to look out for, um, things to look for, and, you know, whether or not it's something that you should be looking for. So I guess let's start with what does a parts caster mean? If you see that on an ad on Reverb or whatever, what does it mean to be a parts caster? Well, it's just kind of a term for homemade Fender type guitar. So there are parts caster tellies, there's parts caster uh, jazz masters, obviously parts caster stratocasters, and it really just means it was not made by Fender or Squire, which is owned by Fender. It just means homemade stratocaster, telecaster, whatever. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean good or bad, right? I mean, I've met some dudes over. Uh, over the couple, last couple of years that like, that's what they do for fun is they build guitars in their basement or whatever. And some of these guitars are really, really good, but uh, you know, it's not a Stratocaster. It didn't come out of a Fender factory. So um, it's a parts caster. Now the, <laughs> I guess right off the bat, because it basically is a homemade guitar, there's really no standard as far as there's no standard neck, there's no standard pickups, you really have to read the description on uh, what you're buying because it could be the world's biggest, most nameless piece of shit set of pickups and a neck that's unplayable. You don't know unless you kind of know what you're looking for. So um, hopefully after this, you guys will kind of have a better idea. So since I bought this guitar a couple months ago, I really think that buying a parts caster is like buying like <laughs> kind of a, a used car with a questionable past, right? You really gotta read the description and kind of know what you're getting into. Um, I'll give you an example. I got a screaming deal on this guitar, so I didn't ask a ton of questions, right? Um, but that being said, this guitar, I put a different neck on it I put a whole new set of pickups in it. Um, so really the only thing that's the same <laughs> uh, since I bought this guitar is the body because it just looks like it was put through a wood chipper and I kind of wanted a Sunburst Strat that was like a crazy, unrealistically heavy relic like this. But if I were to sell this guitar tomorrow, what would I say about it in the description? Well, I would say that the body is not Fender brand. Uh, that's the other thing is that like a lot of these things, the more Fender brand parts you can get while you're shopping for your parts caster, typically the better. The big selling point for this one is like I said, I replaced all the pickups. This is a Fender pre-wired pick guard, meaning they just sell you the pick guard with the pickups in it. All the controls are wired. You just drop it into your body. Uh, with a little bit of soldering skills that you can, you know, teach yourself or have a guitar tech do for you. Now you have 
replaced all the wiring and the electronics in your guitar. Uh, so this is a pre-wired pickguard with Fender brand Tex-Mex pickups in it. That's a good thing. This body, not Fender. I mean, I actually took it to a luthier to have some work done because I had a bitch of a time putting this neck on the body. And in the process, he basically said this is just super ultra duper cheapy kind of body. Um, but that's okay. At least in my eyes, it's uh, because the pickups, I made it work for me, right? I didn't like the guitar at all when I bought it. I didn't like the neck on it. The fret work was bad. It just wasn't a good neck. So I bought a new one for, I think it was this neck was 120 bucks or so. And I mean, necks are all preference. I prefer a little more of a meaty C shape on my neck. So that's what I found. It came in like a reverse 70s headstock, which, you know, the rest of the guitar is obnoxious already. Might as well, you know, make it even a little crazier. And then, um, yes, it says Fender on it. I'm not trying to be a brand whore. I just think a headstock, especially a headstock this big without anything on it looks kind of weird. So I bought the decal on, uh, on eBay and threw it on there, but in no way, shape or form would I ever advertise this guitar when I go to sell it as it's a Fender. It's not the literally, like I said, the only Fender brand thing on here is the pickups and that's it. We kind of, I talked about how like there are no standards, right? For anything, like if you buy a player series Stratocaster from Fender or a classic vibe from Squire, they have a neck menu, like the neck profile is the neck profile. The pickups are the pickups. The, the you know, it's, the fretwork is going to be done roughly kind of the same on all models. Um, with a parts caster, it's a good and a bad thing, right? There's no standard, but at the same time, you can kind of look for whatever you want. You're not limited by anything. And once you buy one, like if it's all about knowing what you're getting into. If you just make somebody an offer on Reverb for a parts caster that is sitting around not selling like I did, and then you just kind of like build the rest yourself, then at the end of the day, you have a guitar that you kind of spec'd out because you picked out the neck you want, you picked out the pickups you want. So like, yes, this thing is wacky as shit, but it's so comfortable for me because I, you know, made the decision to do a lot of the major things to it, like that would affect playability and sound. So if you don't know what you're doing, if you're kind of a beginner in the guitar world, you haven't been playing for more than a couple years, 100% I would say stay, stay away from the parts caster world because you really, like I said about the used car thing, you have no clue what you're getting into. But uh, if you do know what you're doing, if you spend your evenings watching YouTube videos like this and tinkering on stuff and looking for deals everywhere you go, look, man, uh, this is my second parts caster I've owned. The other one was uh, actually made by a local guy I found out later. I picked it up at uh, a shop right down the road from me, Motor City Guitar. If you guys are ever in the Detroit area, it's like literally the best guitar store in the Midwest. It's heaven on earth. I live right down the road. It's wonderful. But if you're looking for something to kind of like make yours, like I know I'm comfortable with strats, right? I, I'm a Stratocaster guy. It, that's just what I grew up playing for the first like 10 years I was playing guitar. So if I'm looking for like a default, something I know I'm gonna be comfortable with, it's this kind of thing, right? I've just never kind of customized my, like one myself and it's all about you shopping. If you find a good deal on one, the resale value on these is shit. <laughs> because again, there's no standards for anything. So if you're kind of savvy, you could get really lucky. I did not get lucky on this one <laughs> because the wiring was terrible, the neck was wrecked, it, it, no good, right? But you can get pretty lucky and occasionally, You'll buy a parts caster telly and you'll pull it apart and go, wait a minute, this has Seymour Duncan's in it? Like, oh, hell yeah. Or you can, oh, man, who's the big uh, neck manufacturer? Something with like a Stumac neck on it and Seymour Duncan's in it. Like, that's a great guitar. And hypothetically, 
because the resale value is so low, you can get a really, really good on paper guitar for a steal if you do a little bit of hunting and you know like what you're looking for. So I'm gonna play my parts caster for a little bit. I call it my Frankenstrat just because it's 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 so weird, man, and it's so just crazy looking, but I'm gonna play it a little bit um just so you guys can kind of hear like you know tex mex pickups and amplifier fender bass breaker 15 miking it up with a sure sm57 and if you hear uh any overdrive i'll start out with some cleans but if you hear any overdrive that's coming from a wampler tumness that i'm just gonna kind of you know push with a little bit but let me know what you guys think have you bought a parts caster what was your experience like um was it a the good news is I knew I was getting a piece of shit because I think I literally paid $180 for it. So like, you know, when when I got it out of the box and I was playing it a little bit, I'm like, well, the frets are pretty ugh. The neck's pretty ugh. Uh, the pickups, whoever wired it, the volume knob only worked at zero or 10 and like the tone controls didn't work. So like, was it amazing? No, but I got a good enough deal on it to where I was like, well, I guess I have a project now and I didn't mind doing that. So it's a whole world in and of itself, but what do you guys think about parts casters? Would you ever buy one? Let me know in the comments. So that's all I got, man. I guess like a couple of notes, uh, not notes, but like parting thoughts. If you're a beginner, fuck no, do not buy a parts caster. You don't. I really wouldn't recommend shopping for one. Um, or building one unless you feel like getting into a project, in which case, go crazy, dude. I mean, the parts in and of themselves, if you know how to do some basic soldering and you know how to use a screwdriver, like, you can do it. It's not rocket science and it's fun, but don't, you know, if you're not confident in yourself, then maybe don't do that. Uh, if I'm a beginner and then I want a Stratocaster, buy a Squire Classic Vibe. If you want like a really, really, really crazy nice, you know you just want a Stratocaster in this color or whatever, then dude, just buy a Stratocaster. But if you don't mind something kind of funky and interesting and you like the hunt, I guess that's the big part of it, right? You like the hunt and the haggling and the research. Personally, that's like, I have so much fun doing that shit. So I really like guitars like this that are weird, they're kind of hard to find. Once you get them, you can start tinkering with it to make it yours. Um, Cause it's not like it's worth 1200 bucks anyways. Like, so yeah, fuck with it. Why not? Make it, make it yours, make it fun. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, like I said, man, if you like what I do, uh, feel free to subscribe. I have a couple other ideas for videos that I'm kicking around next to kind of like get this channel moving, but let's listen to the Frankenstrat, and I'll see you guys later. Thanks, everybody.